What comes to mind when you think of Tokyo? Is it neon lights, sushi, busy street crossings? Chances are, if you clicked on this video, the city's phenomenal train system came to mind as well. Japanese trains are famous for their punctuality and efficiency. In Tokyo, the train usually is the very best way to get to where you're going. On the other side of the world, Chicago is known for old skyscrapers, deep dish pizza, and a green river. And you've probably heard of the L before too, but I think most of the L's fame is thanks to it being a historical monument more than anything else. Most people drive here or take Uber literally everywhere. Like, the transportation costs of some of my fellow Chicagoans have to be astounding. Considering all this, it's no surprise that Chicago is ranked the city with the worst traffic in the US, second globally only to London. Even places that could flourish as quiet pedestrian streets are filled with the noise of cars running over the speed limit. Want to see Lake Michigan? Have fun crossing over eight lanes of highway first. We just did this. And we just do this. The alternative to all those cars is the L, which is certainly not the worst transit system ever by any means. In fact, many large American cities could only dream of having a network like Chicago's. However, the L lacks the reliability, cleanliness, and coverage to make it a truly great network. Instead, buses in Chicago form a much denser network of public transportation. Running in mixed traffic, these groaning, squeaking machines mostly follow the grid of Chicago's street map. For example, Route 8 runs down Halstead Street, Route 66, no, not that Route 66, runs over Chicago Avenue, and Route 74 runs all over my nightmares. Seriously, avoid that route like the plague. So in one city, we have a railway system that's the envy of the rest of the world, and in the other, we see a system that's grasping for funding while cars underneath it go zoom zoom. When seeing a contrast like this, it may seem like the only explanation is that American cities looked at everything Tokyo was doing and did the opposite. But the thing is, that's not entirely true. What if I told you that there was one major case where both Tokyo and Chicago made the very same decision? See, I mentioned a few Chicago bus routes earlier. Ever wonder where their numbers came from? They may seem random, but some of them point back to the old streetcars that ran on the same route. That's right, Chicago used to be a streetcar city. In fact, almost every city in America was, even the really small ones. In the past, I've made videos about the lost streetcars in Grand Rapids, Michigan and Wapaka, Wisconsin. Be sure to check those out. More incredibly, America was crisscrossed with interurban streetcars, which connected different cities all across the country, and they were immensely popular. On the other side of the world, Tokyo also used to be a streetcar city. But just like Chicago, it's not anymore. Both Tokyo and Chicago drastically reduced their trolley networks in the 20th century. Chicago has none left, Tokyo only has two lines left. In the US, during the 1920s and 1930s, cars became more popular. These cars began to fill up the streets, getting in the way of streetcars and slowing them down. As inflation continued after the First World War, most streetcar companies could not afford to keep their low fares what they were, but most cities would not let them raise their fares either. Enter the automobile industry, who at the time was beginning to build buses. Now, technically, this is a conspiracy theory, but many people believe General Motors, who bought some 10% of all trolley companies just to rip out the tracks, had a nefarious plan to make profit off of the decline of the streetcar. The truth is that the government for decades incentivized people to buy cars, demolishing neighborhoods for highways and leaving public transportation out to dry. And of all the conspiracy theories out there today, I'm going to believe the one that says giant corporations convinced politicians to create policies that favored their products over actually giving people a choice. Is that such a stretch? Chicago, which once had the largest streetcar network in the entire world, fell victim to these trends as well. Though the L was thankfully preserved and was even gradually expanded, the last streetcar screeched to a stop in 1957. And so, one of the world's most impressive transit networks was lost. Back to Tokyo, 
Today, the name of Japan's most recent capital city conjures images of flashy bullet trains and crowded metros. Indeed, having used it for the first half of my life, I do think that the Tokyo subway is the best in the world, but it hasn't always existed. The first segment opened in 1927, decades after similar systems in Europe and North America. Before that, commuters were dependent on streetcars. Starting in 1903, the residents of Tokyo traveled by electric tram. Just like in the US, many of these streetcar operators started out as private companies running their own lines. But one by one, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government began to buy them up, running them as public services. They were called Tokyo Todensha, meaning Tokyo Metropolitan Electric Trains. Toden for short. At the peak of the network, it spanned 213 kilometers. That's 132 miles, by the way. In 1923, disaster struck. The Great Kanto earthquake damaged much of the city. Some tram lines needed so many repairs that the city introduced a relatively new concept to temporarily replace them the bus. Especially after World War II, cars became increasingly available in Japan as well, and throughout the 50s and 60s, these buses that had started out as temporary substitutes became permanent replacements. It's important to remember that while the US was mostly going cars all the way at this time, Tokyo was still rapidly expanding its subway system. Public transportation is still the main way that people commute, it's just that buses have replaced the shorter local trips that trolleys used to make. In 1972, it looked as if Tokyo was going to lose its very last public tram line. But in 1974, the government canceled the closure plans and laid out a plan to preserve the remaining fragment. This last line is 12 kilometers or 7.6 miles long. It's called the Toden Arakawa Line, though tourists may be more familiar with its official nickname, the Tokyo Sakura Tram. It runs from Waseda to Minoabashi. Passing through neighborhoods like Ikebukuro, Oji, and Machia. While still useful for commuting, it really serves as a tourist attraction as well. Come ride Tokyo's last remaining tram. To be fair, it's a smart trick. The short one car trains are a huge difference from the long, busy trains everywhere else in the city. The last historic cars have been taken out of service, but the government continues to purchase new vehicles every few years, cars which are tailor made for this line. The saving grace of the Arakawa Line, and I cannot get used to the new nickname, they introduced it after I moved away, has been the fact that it's almost entirely on its own right of way. The only street running is here, in this short but steep section near Oji Station. Most people don't realize, however, that there's another tram line in Tokyo that was spared from the cruel fate of other streetcars. Unless you're actively looking for it, you'd probably never find it. A few miles outside the city center, we find ourselves at Yamashita Station. This stop is served by the Setagaya Line, one of the many lines operated by the private company known as Tokyo Electric Railway. Most Tokyo lines are conventional railway lines, but you'll notice that the platforms on the Setagaya Line are short and low to the ground. That's because the trains on this line are low floor trams. This line is just 5 kilometers or 3 miles long. It has 10 stations, and it's a bit of a running joke that if you're fast enough, you can out jog it. So, the question is why is there a tram in a residential neighborhood like this? Well, in 1907, a streetcar was built from Shibuya Station in Tokyo to Futako Tamagawa. This was known as the Tamagawa Line. In 1923, a branch opened from Sangenjaya to Shimotakaido. These lines were never taken over by the government, like most other lines, but instead became part of Tokyo Electric Railway. A major construction project moved the main line to Futako Tamagawa underground in 1969, severing it from the branch line. The main line was extended to Chuo Rinkan in 2000 and became known as the Tokyo Denyen Toshi Line. The branch line continued as an independent line, now known as the Setagaya Line. And never abandoned its status as a streetcar. Despite the separation, at Sangenjaya, the southern terminus, it's still an easy transfer to the Deyen Toshi Line, which gets you directly into downtown Tokyo. So there you have it the history of streetcar elimination in two major global cities, Chicago and Tokyo. 
Both cities chose expansion of their metro and road infrastructure as the alternative, though Chicago leaned very heavily towards cars, while Tokyo strongly gravitated towards subways. If you ever find yourself in Japan, why not try out these two last remaining pieces of history, something you probably won't find in any guidebooks. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. Consider supporting our Patreon as well so I can continue to make videos like this, as well as some awesome trip reports. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.